Okay. Yeah. So uh, our next speaker is uh, Kevin, and he came all 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 along way from uh, Europe. Uh, he are going to talk about uh, Tecton and Argo CD, which is a uh, uh, very popular tool that we'll use for our cloud native CI and CD. 然后呃，这是我们呃下一位讲者是 Kevin， 那他大老远从那个欧洲跑过来，对，那也是我们邀请过来的讲者。那他等下会介绍就是呃 Tecton 跟 Argo CD 就是这两个呃大家很很常用会。呃，一起用用来做 C I C D 的一个做，呃，那那我们欢迎那个 Kevin。Um, yeah, then I can. I'll bounce around. I'll, I'll bounce around a little bit between here and there. So,、uh, yeah, welcome and、uh, and thank you for coming.、Um, I asked them. I asked、uh, Jean how to say good morning, but I already forgot in in Chinese.、Uh, sorry. Tao an. Okay. <laughs> All right. So、uh, in this session. Um, we'll talk a little bit about、uh, doing kind of next generation-ish、uh, CI/CD. So、uh, the tools that I'm going to be talking about are、uh, Tecton and、uh, and Argo CD. So、uh, Tecton is technically not a CNCF project; it's part of the CD Foundation. So, but it's still part of the Linux Foundation. And、uh, well, Argo CD, of course, is part of the CNCF Foundation. So、uh, just a clarification. Anyway, so. Um, this is kind of how I started、uh, doing my continuous delivery, if you will. So I don't know if you, <laughs> if you recognize this、uh, FileZilla, you know. So back in the day, or maybe some people still do it <laughs> this way.、Um, you know, you have、uh, on your local machine some、uh, some files, and you copy them over.、Uh, you know, it works, but、uh, it's it's not very robust. And if、uh, if you have issues, then、uh, yeah, it becomes.、Uh, Very quickly, not very enterprise friendly, right? So then、uh, we moved on over the years、uh, and, and kind of built our own automation.、Um, and so, you know, one of the tools that I was using back then、uh, was was rsync. So basically,、uh, we were already fairly modern in the sense that we were, we were using Git for our、uh, for our development and、uh, for our repositories. And so we would check out on a, on a master server. The, the master branch, and then、uh, you know, copied it over to、uh, to multiple servers to have high availability、uh, with rsync. But again, you know, like if something goes wrong,、uh, it's not very easy to roll back. <laughs>、um, and so, you know, if you look at、uh, the kind of the the developer flow,、um, you know, a lot was. Happening in an inner inner loop, you know, in in terms of、uh, improvements、uh, for development and everything.、Uh, so, you know, if you haven't seen this in the inner loop, you kind of have this. You know, you do your coding, you do your building, your packaging.、Uh, you know, ideally some、uh, some debugging, maybe some、uh, testing on your local machine, and then you'll push your code to a repository, and then、um, you know. Probably will create some sort of pull or merge request, depending on、uh, what tool you're using, and then、uh, you basically you end up in this outer loop、uh, where you're not necessarily working on your local machine or some cloud IDE or something.、Uh, you have multiple people, you know, kind of. Uh, in the process, maybe they're doing code reviews, and then you'll do your、uh, your build and a continuous integration server or or,、uh, or platform. Maybe do some security tests and some compliance tests and everything,、uh, and then you know do some deployments. And so you can see here in in this、uh, kind of representation, you have these two、uh, cute logos, right? So、uh, this is、uh, for, for the build. We got our little、uh, Tecton logo, a cute、uh, Tomcat. And then、uh, here we have、uh, Argo CD or, or Argo, which also has、uh, some other projects like、uh, Argo rollouts. But today we're just、uh, going to talk about Argo CD.、Um, and so, yeah, we're going to talk about the outer loop and、um, yeah, why why are we doing this kind of more cloud native CI CD?、Um, you know, we're developing more in、uh, in distributed architectures these days, so we don't just have one. Thing that we need to deploy anymore. We have all these different、uh, components that all need to be deployed individually, which means that you know you need a pipeline for each and a delivery me mechanism for for each of these projects. So、uh, we need a better way to、uh, to deliver. And so you know, basically, we need a good solution for CI/CD. So just kind of clarifying, CI. Uh, is the process of you know building, testing, maybe security checks and and so on, and and、uh, some sort of release to 
uh, a testing environment, and then uh, CD is the continuous delivery or continuous uh, deployment. And basically, the difference between continuous delivery and deployment um, is essentially continuous delivery. You have everything automated, so you know you you push your code, you uh, you go through a process that builds your uh, your artifacts or whatever it is. Uh, based on the programming lang language that you're using uh, and get it ready to deploy to production. It's, you know, you can deploy it at any time, but you still have a manual step to actually go to production. And this is what most organizations do because they're like, well, we're not entirely sure if we want to go directly to production when somebody pushes their code or when it gets merged at least. Um, but, you know, there's organizations out there are very mature when you have really good testing in place, really good automation, where they're really continuously deploying um, automatically. And so uh, that's something where you need tools to be able to do that. And so th those are some of the tools that we're looking at today. You can still do the manual part too. So just to clarify, <laughs> if I don't uh, say that at the end, you know, both tools allow you to do either. So um, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do a little demo of uh, how to do this um, using a little game that, uh, that I've built together with my, my colleagues, and it's this car racing game. And so I need your participation. So hopefully you brought your cell phone and you have some internet network, and then you can play along, because we're basically going to be playing this little game. Um, uh, uh, so there's these two little cars, and so I'll show you a QR code, and then uh, you'll be divided into two teams, so you'll be playing against each other in some way. Uh, and then uh, we're going to basically create clean energy to power these cars with a, with a windmill. So this is what you're going to be seeing on your phone. You're going to see this windmill, and you have to tap it to make the windmill turn, and that's going to create the energy to, uh, to make these cars go. Um, and uh, yeah, so maybe real quick showing you how it works. So you, every time you, you tap, you create a, a rest uh, request and so that's going to send uh, those requests to a Java backend. So I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Java. Um, there's a there's a Java stack called Quarkus, um, which starts up really fast, has a very small footprint, which you wouldn't necessarily expect from uh, from Java. But uh, so if you haven't looked at this, Quarkus is definitely a really cool uh, stack. But anyway, so that's what we built the game with. And so you every time there's an event, so you tap, it goes into a Kafka, and then uh, on my dashboard, I'll see, you know, I'll, I'll ingest those results, and that's uh, that's how we're going to power the cars. Um, so let's try it, and I hope this uh, QR code works. Um, let me know. You should see, like, uh, some little car spinning maybe that says waiting for game. Somebody can uh, confirm that this is working. It works? Okay. All right. Good. So if everybody's done scanning the QR code, then I'll go to the dashboard. So we've got here our game running. So this is running on a Kubernetes cluster, of course. Um, and uh, I think there are five replicas running right now. So in my case, I have uh, a, uh, an OpenShift, you know, so it's an implementation of Kubernetes. And so here we have our game. And so we can see there's, uh, there's five pods. So, you know, that's uh, how we have our high availability. So if everybody's ready, and I'm going to hit refresh here, and we'll see that, you know, that uh, we have some players. Uh, so we have 11 people in team one and 12 in team two. It doesn't matter. It's just the average of all the players together. So, you know, definitely play because otherwise you're dragging down the average for, for everybody else. So if you're ready, you start tapping, okay? So three, two, one, okay. So the faster you tap, so team one is definitely in the lead. If, uh, if team two will give you a little hint, tap with multiple fingers, it's going to go faster. <laughs> All right, team one is, wow, much faster. And there comes team two. All right, good job. <laughs> so uh, we have, uh, actually, the, the fastest um, person was on team two. We've got uh, somebody who had the username Rosenman. Who was that? Let's see. Nice. Yeah, so you're very good at uh, with the tapping. And then uh, on team one, we had somebody with DG Rolamo. I don't know. These are just like random names. So I <laughs> Who's, uh, who was DG Rolamo? Wow, the, the champion of team one. Well, 
Uh, so good job, Team 1, for winning. But don't worry, Team 2, you get a chance to play again. Because why am I showing this game? Of course, now I'm going to release a new version. And we're going to use the two projects uh, that we've talked about. Well, that I'm going to talk about. So uh, let's jump into that a little bit more. So what if we added a new feature to this game, right? And so you can kind of already see a little teaser for what this new feature is going to be. So instead of uh, tapping the phone, we're going to make it a little more realistic to power our windmill. We're going to shake our phone, so we're going to use the accelerometer of the, of the phone. So we're going to release that new feature, but uh, before I uh, uh, do that, um, let's you know talk a little bit about a, a story, right? So what if I'm going to add a new feature? Uh, this is this is how I like to do it as a, as a developer, right? So uh, I work uh, really hard during the week, and then uh, Friday afternoon, I'm like, all right, feature is done. Oops, delete my, uh, delete my code, or delete, deploy my code uh, to production. It's, it's going to work, trust me, no worries. And then, uh, yeah, you know how it works, right? <laughs> so then uh, at 4 in the morning on Saturday morning, there's issues, and then everybody gets called and whatever. So we don't want that, right? We want a nice uh, process where we can deploy. And even if it is Friday night, uh, and, and I, I, you know, I put my ops in that position again, that it works in a, in a good way. So you know, if we go back to the developer flow, um, we want, you know, me to do my coding and developing and testing and whatever more and you know to have that automated that nice uh, cycle of automation with uh, with some tools so we want to use uh, cloud native CI CD of course right we're in the we're in the uh, KCD group here in the Kubernetes uh, community the, uh, cloud native computing foundation group so uh, I don't have to explain necessarily what uh, what cloud native is I think um, but maybe why do we want to use cloud native CI CD? Um, well, actually, it makes sense, and especially if we're using things like serverless, uh, we can create, we can declare how we want to use uh, continuous integration uh, in the same way that we declare, you know, how we want our environment to be defined in uh, in Kubernetes, right? So typically with YAMLs. Um, and so you can do the same thing with uh, with these tools uh, with uh, Tekton and Argo CD. So you can define exactly this is what I want my pipeline to be. This is one uh, how I want uh, each task to run. So whether it's a Git clone or a Git or um, or um, a build of my artifact or whatever, um, but run those only when I want to run my pipeline. So scale up a container, do the work, and then scale it back down and only use the resources that I need in that moment. And I have it all defined, of course, in YAML so I can reuse it. Everybody can see what I'm doing. And that's the idea behind uh, Cloud Native CI CD. So a project that does that uh, pretty well is, is Tekton. Um, so Tekton is, uh, well, it's of course an open source project. It's part of the CD Foundation. Uh, so, like I said, it's part of the um, the Linux Foundation, and so it's a collaboration of uh, different companies. So, you know, of course, we have Red Hat, <laughs> um, but we also have uh, there's Google Cloud Bees. So, the people behind uh, Jenkins, um, IBM, and and uh, and so on and so forth that all work on uh, on Tekton. So, the idea behind Tekton, some concepts uh, are steps and tasks so a task is basically a group of uh, of tests that you run in uh, in a particular container uh, so a task can be you know so uh, well I, I guess tests can be like hey do a git clone or do maven test or something and then you can group some of those together in inside a task and that's a single uh, unit of uh, of deployment in tekton and so then you have a set of tasks that you define in a pipeline to say, OK, I want a task that does the, the, the Git clone. Then that container can go away. I can move on to, uh, to running the tests and doing the builds. And then uh, those can go away. I can do some security scans. I can uh, build a container, push it to a uh, registry, and, and whatever more. So that's uh, all you define in, uh, in a pipeline. And then, of course, you have the custom. So those are custom resources. Um, in uh, in Kubernetes, and then if you you then have the actual implementation because this this is the definition of 
this is how I'd like the things to run. And then you have the task run and the pipeline run that are the actual implementation that's going to kick off the process, that's going to uh, create the containers to, to run these processes. So uh, just a little bit of background. Does anybody know the project Knative? So uh, Knative is another uh, CNCF project uh, to do um, serverless with containers. It's a really cool project. So Tecton was actually part of Knative. Um, but then they spun it out into its own project because it was kind of, uh, you know, uh, a little bit uh, more mature at the time and, you know, it, it actually can work independently from Knative, but it does use uh, Knative for the serverless scaling, so FYI. Um, so this is an example of a, of a pipeline. Of course, uh, you know, Kubernetes, so we have to so show some YAML, right? So uh, in this case, you have uh, this uh, custom resource, which is the pipeline. And then you can see there's a set of tasks. And then uh, you define uh, the different tasks. So in this case, there's only one. There's a git clone. And you have some uh, parameters that you can pass in so that you can reuse the tasks. Uh, so, you know, so every project probably has a git clone. So it doesn't make sense to create a new, uh, you know, to create a new YAML with uh, with a task for that. So if we can reuse it, and then as a parameter, pass in the URL for your Git repository, so you can reuse tasks across different pipelines. Um, and then the workspace is another important uh, concept in uh, in uh, Tecton. That's how you maintain state between different uh, steps and different tasks, so that when you do your Git clone and that container goes away, well. Of course, ideally, you still have your source code uh, somewhere for your next step, right? Because otherwise, you have to do it all over again. So that's how you maintain state between the, the different tasks. Um, and then uh, speaking of those tasks, so you actually have a Tecton hub. So I think it's Tecton hub dot, uh, well, there, hub dot Tecton dot dev. Uh, you can find a whole bunch of tasks, uh, community tasks. Uh, that you can just use in your pipeline. So you don't have to invent, you know, uh, uh, build a container image that can do um, a Maven uh, build or something. So you can probably find a task that already has Maven uh, and, and then you uh, maybe pass a parameter to say what kind of uh, Maven task you want to run as an example. So you have a bunch of uh, tasks already. Um, and then, of course, there's a CLI, too, so you can automate and, and uh, kick off uh, pipelines and everything. Um, so that's uh, Tecton, so for the CI part, so for the continuous integration. Um, but then we also want to automate how to deploy our, uh, our applications, of course. Um, and so we want to use GitOps for that. So uh, for those that aren't familiar with GitOps, as the name already says, of course, Git uh, is used in, uh, in GitOps. So basically, you use Git as a single source of truth, not just for your application code, but also for um, all your definitions, your configurations of, of, uh, of how your application should be deployed. Uh, but not even, n not limited to that, you can actually define exactly how you want your cluster to be configured uh, all you know, like, let's say, probably YAML, maybe JSON, uh, but probably YAML in uh, uh, in uh, Kubernetes, and you store it in Git. And that's your single source of truth where you're going to define exactly your desired state of your cluster, of how you should deploy your application, how many replicas it should be using, and so on and so forth. So you know exactly who changed something, you know exactly when they changed it, and um, so you have exactly the, the audit trail of, uh, of what happened. So you can use Git as a single source of truth, treat everything as code, not just your code, but also your entire environment. And then you can use the operations through the Git flow that you're using for your application. So you can use uh, merge requests, uh, pull requests. Somebody can review the changes, and then you can push them. And then the GitOps engine will uh, we'll notice, hey, there's a change in your desired state. Let's make sure that it matches with what's actually on your cluster, and it can automatically mitigate that. Or you can say, I want to have a little button that says, OK, you can go ahead and sync uh, my desired state to be what, uh, what's on my cluster. Vice versa, that also means that if somebody goes into your environment, makes some changes uh, that were not defined, um, your GitOps engine will notice that and say, hey, this is, does not match your desired state. So we can automatically 
fix it, uh, override whatever somebody was trying to do, um, you know, kind of going around your, uh, your, uh, your Git flow. Um, or again, you can have a manual um, way to, to do that and just get a notification saying, hey, Kevin went into this Kubernetes cluster. He changed some, uh, some configuration. He, he uh, made the, uh, the, the amount of pods smaller or something because he thought there was less uh, requests or something. But he shouldn't do it that way. He should define, like, here's the change that I want to make. Somebody can actually look at it and see what, they've, uh, what, what I've been wanting to do. So, now the difference between CI and CI/CD and GitOps then, um, well, CI/CD, you have kind of a one-way street, right? So you have your, you can still define your desired state. You go through your pipeline, through your tasks, um, and then uh, you can deploy your application. Um, but that's it. the The idea with GitOps is that you have this continuous flow of defining your desired state, uh, seeing what your cluster state is, and then observe it, take some action, and then that's going to continuously happen. So if somebody changes something on the cluster, you know, GitOps will take action. Whereas with CI/CD, if it gets deployed and somebody makes a change, then the CI/CD engine doesn't know what's going on. So you need kind of a little bit of both because GitOps is not going to do your, your build of your application. It's not going to do run through your tests. It just defines your desired state of um, what should be on the cluster. So you know, once I've built my, uh, my container or whatever and I push it, then I can define here's where to find my container image. And now uh, this is the container image I want to use in my environment and then GitOps can take that. So you need a little bit of both and that's why we're talking about both Tekton and uh, Argo CD. And I'll, I'll, say, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get to the Argo CD part. Um, but you know, let's deploy our new feature, of course, in this uh, kind of modern automated GitOps way. So I'm going to do some, uh, some very complicated coding here. So uh, be ready for this. So, oh, I need to go to my other screen here. So I have uh, my Git repository. And so I have two projects here. I have the Quinoa Wind Turbine. That's where my Java code is in uh, with, uh, with the game. And then I have the Quinoa uh, Wind Turbine Manifest. And that's where I have all the manifests, the Kubernetes manifest that, desire, that uh, set the state for, uh, for my application. So just to give you a quick look. Uh, so here I have, you know, just some uh, very basic Kubernetes uh, resources. So I have a deployment, I have a route, uh, which is, you know, like an OpenShift concept for ingress uh, and a service, and then, you know, a cus customization file. And in my customization file, I have the, the image that, uh, that I'm going to push once I've uh, created my new, uh, my new uh, application. My, when I've pushed my code, I'll build a container image. And then uh, here's the definition of that. And there's a digest to look at the exact tag uh, that I've pushed. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to build my code. I'm going to push my container image. And then I'm going to update this value with the new value of my, uh, of my container image. And by changing that, I'm changing the desired state of my cluster. And that's how GitOps is going to notice that there's a change. So uh, let me do that real quick. So I'm not going to go here. I need to go to my actual code. Back one more time. All right. So here's my uh, my development that I'm gonna do one-handed. So <laughs> I'm gonna go to. Oh, it's not scripts. It's uh, source, I believe. Uh, I have to remember where it is now. Main web UI source config. I'm gonna edit my file. I'm doing my development uh, right in GitHub. And I'm going to set this flag to true. So that's going to enable the shaking, and then this to false. Because of course, I've already made this code change. It's just a, a feature flag. OK, so I'm going to commit my changes. Uh, yeah, it's a little hard to type. Can you hear me with this? Yes. All right. So uh, we'll say um, enable shaking. And I'm going to commit straight to my main branch. No code reviews or anything. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> All right, so now I've, uh, I've made my code change. 
and I have a webhook that, uh, that calls my, my pipeline. So I'll show you my pipeline. So in this case, uh, I have it integrated in, uh, in OpenShift, but you can use Tekton in, uh, in any Kubernetes. So it's, uh, you know, it's, of course, a standalone project. It's just uh, integrated into OpenShift here. So you can see my pipeline. Uh, so with the definition here, so as, you, as I showed you earlier, right? So there's the pipeline and then uh, different tasks and whatever more. And then uh, here's the pipeline run, so the actual implementation of the pipeline. And you can see it did, uh, it's doing a git clone. Well, it did the git clone. Now it's doing the build of the source code. Then it's going to use uh, Builda, which is a, um, a tool to build container images. Um, and then it's going to push it to a Quay repository. So there's uh, Quay.io, where you're, you're going to be able to find it. Um, and then uh, once that's done, it's going to update the manifest of that other uh, project. And then once that's done, our Argo CD, which is an implementation of GitOps, is going to pick up those changes and deploy them. So let's go take a look at that. So I have here my, uh, my GitOps engine. Um, and well, some uh, certificate. Let's just uh, accept the risk. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to log in. So this is me giving permissions to OpenShift because, again, it's, uh, it's running via, via OpenShift. Uh, and here we have the definition of my cluster, right? So in those manifests, remember how I showed you there was a deployment and a route and a service? So you see those here defined. And so uh, based on the service, it's uh, going to up, set up some uh, resources. Based on the deployment, there's some... Uh, uh, replica sets and then here are those uh, five pods that we see running so if we go back to our pipeline we can see that uh, it's doing the container build right now we can look at the we can look at the logs and uh, keep an eye on that because you know of course uh, in our tasks we can follow what's going on and then uh, we can see the successfully tagged our image and this is the new digest uh, that it's uh, created and so then it'll uh, update our manifest with that digest. So let's take a look here um, at our pipeline run. OK, so now it's, uh, it's doing that. So it's doing a git clone of our manifest. And then it's going to update the manifest with, uh, with the new version. So let's take a look and see. Uh, repository, Skinua, wind turbine manifests. And we can see updated now. So it just happened. Uh, my Tekton bot image digest updated. So now we can see that uh, our customization file has been updated to a new version just now, right? So just uh, and so now if we go back to Argo CD, I'll make it uh, refresh so it goes a little faster. You can see it says, "Oh, you're out of sync." So a new uh, your desired state doesn't match with what's on the cluster. So let's uh, let's make sure we fix that. So you can see here that it's spinning, and you can see some more pods being created. So it's rolling out our new feature uh, to my production environment. <laughs> and so um, once that's done, we're going to go back to our game. And then uh, hopefully, we can see that instead of tapping this time, you're going to be shaking to make the cars go. Uh, and it looks like I'm running a little bit out of time, so we'll uh, what I'll do is I'll go back to the slides, wrap up, and then we'll play the game if that uh, if that works. So, um, so just uh, to kind of recap what's happened here. So I uh, made my code changes, right? Uh, pushed them to Git, our CI engine, our Tekton picked up those changes, created containers to run the tasks, then tore those down. Uh, and then push the image to the image registry. And then uh, in this case, I made uh, the change directly from my Tekton uh, task to, uh, to create those changes. Um, and then uh, CI CD, or well, no, C CD actually with GitOps, notice the changes and then is going to, uh, to uh, take action to fix our cluster to our desired state. So Argo CD is an implementation of the GitOps engine. Uh, so let's uh, let's see if our new version is there. So if uh, if everything works well, you can either refresh your browser or uh, rescan the QR code, and then you should see a button that says "Enable Shaking." Hopefully, you see that, and just uh, tap on that button. And if you're an iPhone, I think you have to give permission to uh, uh, to be able to shake. 
and uh, let's uh, let's try it. So I'm going to refresh our game here. The new version was deployed. Okay, so our new our players are loading. So we got uh, 11 players in Team One, 16 in Team Two. Again, doesn't matter. It's just the average, right? So if everybody's ready, um, one warning. Hold on to your phone, okay? <laughs> Don't throw it, especially at me, <laughs> okay? Uh, so three, two, one, go! All right. And I have to take my own picture, of course. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Team two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we have uh, Team 2, we have somebody with the username, uh, actually Team 1 uh, had the fastest uh, shaker again. So who's uh, Dorman on Team 1? Yeah, very, you're very good at <laughs> shaking your <laughs> And then Team 2, the fastest one was Golic, Golic, Golic. All right, very good with, uh <laughs> with the phone shaking. So. Hopefully, I, I gave you an idea of uh, how to deploy a new feature automatically with, uh, with Tekton integrated with uh, Argo CD to automate your delivery. So um, that's, uh, that's it. So just a quick, um, if you want to play around with OpenShift, you can uh, get a free sandbox environment. So you go to developers.redhat.com, you create a, a free account, and then you, have your, uh, you can uh, play around with, uh, with OpenShift. Uh, it has Tekton built in. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it has uh, Argo CD. It could, but you can use also an external Argo CD or you can deploy it on it. Um, and then uh, if you want to learn more about GitOps, this is a free ebook that, uh, that my team, uh, my teammates wrote. So you can download it for free uh, through the, the Red Hat Developers Program. And um, yeah, some more developers. Here's the slides for, for this presentation. So if you would like to uh, download the slides, you should be able to find them here. And I'll give you a second if uh, anybody, sorry, I'm a, no okay. <laughs> All right, and then uh, that's it. <laughs> so uh, thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, um, yeah. All right. I'm assuming that you were asking if anybody has questions, but yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, so uh, his question is, uh, can you only use Tekton on a KBIS uh, Kubernetes environment? Um, yeah, there are other projects, so you don't necessarily need to use Tekton if you want to use Argo CD or, or GitOps. So you can use another uh, uh, continuous integration tool. You can e you can even use tech, uh, Jenkins on uh, um, on Kubernetes. The the thing with like a tool like Jenkins is that you have to deploy an entire server, and then you need to install plugins, and you need to maintain that. And typically, that's like a very dedicated team. Um, Tekton is is Simpler in the sense that you just kind of define how you want to run your pipelines, but there's no server to maintain or anything because it's just, you know, as you kick off a pipeline run, it's just going to start up those tasks. But, you know, there's other projects out there, um, Spinnaker and, uh, you know, a bunch of other ones. And so you can use those too. You're not tied to just using uh, Tekton. Sorry. I think I didn't make yeah. it here. Oh, sorry. I think his question is. Uh, can uh, can you only use Tekton on Kubernetes? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you do have to use uh, Kubernetes, I think, because it uses c uh, custom resources um, and to be able to use the serverless capabilities of, uh, of, well, in this case, containers orchestrated by Kubernetes. Yeah, so you do need Kubernetes. Uh, hi, uh, I, I see your demo, which is the uh, Argo CD on the OpenShift. So is the two uh, the, the two different products are integrated together, or it's just a uh, plugin in the uh, in the in in <laughs> in your OpenShift? Thank you.
Yeah, um, so, so there are two separate projects. Um, in this case, yeah, on, on my uh, OpenShift instance, so basically you have, uh, I have them deployed via operators, right? So there's, uh, you can see here, there's some uh, operators installed. So in this case, you see Red Hat OpenShift GitOps, which is, uh, you know, a, a supported version of Argo CD. Um, so that's how I have that component installed. And then uh, same with uh, Red Hat OpenShift Pipelines, which is the implementation of Tekton uh, in OpenShift. But you can also install, uh, you know, and I can show you here in the operator hub, which is where you find different things that you can install in, uh, uh, in Kubernetes using the operator framework. If you, uh, if you want to use uh, just uh, Tekton, um, well, there should be a Tekton operator, but I don't see it. But <laughs> there's uh, the Red Hat OpenShift pipelines, in any case, in OpenShift. But you can also go just to uh, uh, tekton.dev and then uh, you can find how to uh, install it. And then same with uh, GitOps. So there are two separate projects. I'm using them together because it, uh, it makes sense that, you know, for my application build, I use uh, a continuous integration tool. So I like to use Tekton for that. Uh, and then for the automated uh, deployment, I use, uh, I use the Argo CD. But, you know, there's also like Flux CD or something. So there's different projects out there as well. I hope that answers your question. I'm wondering how do you handle the multi-stage deployment in Argo CD? Like what is the recommendation way? I'll use this microphone. <laughs> Uh, so multi-stage deployments, as in uh, there's multiple uh, components to your application that you're deploying. Um, so uh, one thing that you could do with, uh, with Argo CD with GitOps is you can use sync waves. And so you can define uh, first deploy this component uh, or, or these elements. Uh, and only once they've been deployed, then deploy the next component. So for example, if uh, maybe a, a simplified example, but let's say that I want to deploy an application that also has a database. I first want to deploy the database, or maybe before that, even the operator, uh, and then the database that's you know deployed by the operator, and, and then wait, and then, you know, so you can sit in the wave that that's the first wave or the second wave, and then the third wave is to deploy the application, and then a the fourth wave might be to, set, uh, to create some test tools on Kubernetes. So, yeah. So, I, hopefully that answers uh, your question a little bit. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, we are a bit time. So uh, that's uh, thanks, Kevin, again. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> There are any Java developers, and they like Quarkus. Have some Quarkus stickers. <laughs> you want a Quarkus sticker? There's there's different ones, different uh, rock stars. <laughs> okay, my I'm now I'm going to build a multi class of OpenShift. I'm going, but I don't want longer range. So I just like control my operation. Maybe deploy one like spoke A or spoke B class. I can how can I control or maybe just need to build on the hard um, I didn't quite understand the question, but let's uh, let's step to the side and then because uh, I think the next speaker probably wants to. 